Many elderly patients are ending up in ICU at the end of their lives. Dr. Peter Saul, a specialist at John Hunter Hospital, talks about the medicalization of death. It was permissible at one time to die of old age, which is a perfectly understandable thing, but about 20 years ago you couldn't write old age on death certificates anymore. And now we all have to die of something. And the something we have to die of, by definition, is something reversible. So although we talked about pneumonia as being a, an old man's friend and just a way of dying rather than a disease, these days pneumonia is treatable. So at what point are you allowed to die and at what point are you allowed to die of something that we could potentially reverse? And this has caused a great deal of confusion at end of life now. We talk about a good death and it always seems to be about holding someone's hand as they slip gently into the night. Um, can you just talk about the experience of someone dying in, ACU, in ICU? What, how bad can that be? Well, you're out of control, which is what most people don't want. Nobody will necessarily say what you would have wanted said for you, so you're not only out of control, but people systematically don't do what you want. Yeah. Um, so that's bad. But intensive care is also an uncomfortable experience. The pain is experienced by a lot of people in intensive care because of all the tubes and lines we put in. And the stress on your family is very high. So there's five times the rate of post-traumatic stress disorder in your family dying in intensive care than anywhere else in the hospitals. Is the Advanced Care Directive, is that the solution to all these issues, or is that just an element? It's, 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 it's an element. It's, it's important in that where it's there and people know about it, it's highly influential. There's no doubt that if you say something and you document that, it will influence people's behaviour. However, it's very rare. It's rarely available at the right time. We have no system for translating it. We often don't ask for it. We've got nowhere to put it. Yeah. Uh, we just don't know where this fits in in an acute care setting. And what I would urge people to do is don't put all your effort into writing advanced care directives until we know what to do with that when you come to hospital. So the, the short-term fix is much more about having conversations with your family who we know will be there and will be the ones who are responsible for making decisions for you. And is it really just about GPs doing these directives or who, who's there to, to help guide the patients in, in drawing them up? I think, I think that we need to think outside the square, a horrible phrase, uh, but I think people living in community aged care settings can have sessions where they do this with somebody who knows how to help. There are creative ways around the fact that we know that GPs don't really have the time to do this properly. We accept that. We just have to find ways of supporting them to be part of the process.